You know, our Father provided a beautiful place for us called this earth, this earth age. And many people are going to say, well, wonder, wonder why God allows things to happen as it did on September the 11th. He didn't. We did. Okay. It's real easy to pass the buck. You know, um, what is, if somebody gets on your back, what does God expect you to do about it? Knock him off. Okay. You don't, you know, if somebody steps on your toe, if it's on purpose, what are you going to do? You're going to say, I'm a Christian and I can't defend myself. Document that in the Word of God for me. You cannot. Okay. If you're a teacher and you're teaching and you get carried away and overdump your load, then some other preacher might reach out and tap you. Well, that's your fault too. Turn the other cheek. But if some nut comes up on the street and slaps you, deck him. Okay? It's called self-defense, and God expected us to do that. A lot of people say, well, my word, the disciples didn't. Oh, what did Peter do when they come to get Christ? He drew his sword, I said sword, and sliced off the ear of one of the people. You know, too long and too many years now, political correctness, and I'll say it, those to the left have not allowed us to carry our garbage out. And if you keep your garbage too long, guess what it starts doing? It begins to smell. So that that is politically, you know, being an old combat marine, there's many of you men in here are old service combat people. We've seen this before. We've lived it. And we tried to keep it away from the shores of America. And it would seem like that these so-called politically correct people can scream out, well, I just think that we shouldn't offend people and we shouldn't stoop to their level and blah, 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 and blah, blah, until they see it happen to civilians where they might have been one of them. They kind of change their tune, don't they? They kind of stand up and say, I'm proud to be American. All right, well, we'll see about that, won't we? How long their pride lasts. It's time to haul out garbage. And we're going to do it. Now, this is different. And anyone that has combat experience, it doesn't take long to, what is your, what is your enemy? What's your target? How is it going to be handled? Well, let's oversimplify it. You like turkey for Thanksgiving? You're going to go out and get you a turkey. Well, you don't go out into the woods and just start shooting off rounds in the air and everywhere else. You wait until you what you get what in your sights? A turkey. It may take a while. Any hunter knows that. But we don't want to be shooting holes in the air. We want to shoot the turkeys. All right? And we're going to shoot the turkeys. And, well, <laughs> the poor things. Poor things. Ask some of those grieving people in New York that are looking for their chi the, the children are looking for their parents to come home, and then give me your crybaby story. Poor me, baby. Bunch of people that we've raised up here in this generation because we haven't been able to carry our garbage out. There are in religions. There, everyone has a right in this great nation to practice their religion. But when it comes to executing in mass civilians, that's not religion, that's satanic. And it's only a small faction of certain groups. And we have nothing against those that want to practice their religion. I've shed blood on foreign soil that we have these re re uh, freedom, that we have freedom of religion. And I'll fight for their right to worship as they choose to worship, as long as it's decent. But when it ceases being decent, people can utilize common sense and know something has got to be done. Probably the greatest thing that has happened to us this past week is rather than call it a crime, so that it has to go through the judicial system, and our judicial system is fine, but there's just a big difference in uh, 
extricating that utilizing the judicial service than war. Okay? In the judicial system, we would have to give the, the, um, the people who brought this act upon us the right of being proven in, uh, being innocent until we could prove them guilty. And on and on for years and years, you know. The fact that now we have been able to declare war, you just find the turkey and shoot his feathers off, okay? That's it. Nothing said, no trial, and it's legal, all right? And we've got a lot of nations, thank God, that are backing us on this. Some are going to be saying, well, I've never heard a preacher talk like that before. Well, there are not too many old combat marines that are preachers. I don't really don't know why. In the regular, usually, field of denominations, for some reason, they can't hardly handle our truth directness and telling it like it is. But, but that's all right. We're the largest independent church in America anyway, even including some of the would-be's, okay? So tell it like it is. You are an American. Be proud of it. Freedom is not free. There have been some awesome prices paid for your rights. And every few years we're going to we have this pop back up again for a new generation to participate in. Back them, back your president, because there will be lives lost and blood shed, but freedom is worth it, because you would not wish to live as those perpetrators live in insanity. And there, don't ever get the idea they're sick. They're not sick as far as insanity is concerned. They are normal and they believe and are brainwashed in what they do is the correct thing to do. That's what makes it very, very wrong. And may our president and our armed services and the American people stand strong with the will, and we shall to root out wherever it is and those that would harbor it, this uh, falseness that would take their vengeance out on helpless children and civilians that couldn't defend themselves if they were in a paper bag and no place to go. They seem to be afraid to do anything militarily, but they're going to have to get used to it real soon. But remember, be patient. You don't shoot the turkey till he's in the sights, all right? And that's the way this game is going to go, so don't get all antsy. Be patient. We have some people that are experienced. I have served under many of them. They're getting a few years on them, aren't they? Some of them. Well, that's good. Experience is great in a situation like this. Trust, me, trust them. We're going to get it squared away. Now, uh, now into the beautiful Word of God. And God's Word is beautiful, and it roots out satanic uh, adventures by various people. Let's talk about the moth a moment, okay? The moth, the word in the Hebrew is ash. And A-S-H, uh, uh, when we would transliterate it rather than translate it. And the meaning of ash is, as it is used, is to consume. And the reason the moth is called that, you know, God likens the moth to false teachings. That's to say people that like to get off on side trips away from God's word. He likens them as um, how a moth works. It's even written in Job one time that they build their house as a moth house. Well, do you know how a moth builds his house? The moth is one of the only, I'll stretch the point a little bit for clarity, something in the butterfly family that flies at night instead of day. Now think about that a minute. I said... They fly at night, never in the day, as a normal butterfly would do. 
The female lays her egg, uh, prefers dirty clothes. If you keep your house clean, you're not too likely, that is to say, the female is going to find a spot or something on a cloth to lay her egg. She doesn't like cleanliness. Just like your church house should be clean. Your belief should be clean. Because the moth then from the uh, nap of, say, fur or wool will create its own house out of the material and then get into the thread. And then one stitch at a time until what you've got left is not pretty. So, again, so that we understand why God wants you to know these things. If you keep your house clean, and it doesn't hurt to even throw in a mothball every once in a while, you know. Or have a lot of cedar chests. Praise God for the cedar, the tree that stands for our people. All right? They won't go near it. But they always operate at night. If you ever see one, it's got four wings. Uh, kind of a brace in front and a brace behind. Many of you probably have never seen one for the simple fact they fly at night. I'm sure a lot of you have seen what they leave for you. So uh, with that thought in mind, perhaps that will... The subject is, is belief. And God telling you what will happen if you venture off the simplicity that he gives you to absorb so that you can protect yourself in what way? Well, as long as you follow his word, he's going to protect you. But if you get off in the way of some of these maniacs we've seen in the past week, then I guarantee you your house is going down. I, I don't know. How is your house? Think about it. As we open your Bibles to chapter 50, the great book of Isaiah. The word ash, for you that are pretty familiar with the Hebrew, as you know, is also what the word translated for... Um, in um, meteorological terms is um, Arturus. Arturus, which is the beekeeper, or some people call it the big bear. But it's the same Hebrew word, ash, A-S-H. And it, it draws that from the word Hebrew word migration, that part of the ash, to migrate and consume. And... Um, uh, there are a couple, Job 9.9, 9, and um, another place or two comes to mind. It's not important. I just thought you should know that in passing for a little deeper study in better understanding the signs from heaven, as uh, you can get a moth in a lot of places. Okay, chapter 50, the great book of Isaiah, word of wisdom from our Father in Yeshua's name, and it reads, Thus saith the Lord... Where is the bill of your mother's divorcement? Where you got it at? Did you know God's a divorcee? He divorced her. Whom I have put away. I divorced her. Or which of my um, creditors is it to whom I have sold you? When I got rid of you, did I sell you? Name them. Of course, he didn't say. That's the point. Behold... For your iniquities, it's for your sins, for your softness, have you sold yourselves. And for your transgressions is your mother put away. That's the cause of the divorce. Now, God will divorce a nation today that drifts too far and doesn't carry out their garbage often enough. He will certainly slip to the side or let allow them to slip. Verse 2, Wherefore? When I came, was there no man? When I called, was there none to answer? Couldn't I find one among you all that I could really call a champion? And of course, this is leading to Christ, all right? Is my hand shortened at all? Do you think this makes me weak because you're bad? That it cannot redeem? Who is your kinsman redeemer? It's Christ, of course. And God will always redeem those that, the children that love him. Or have I no power to deliver? Behold, at my rebuke, I dry up the sea. I make the rivers a wilderness. 
their fish stinketh because there is no water and drieth for thirst. What God is saying, I'm in control and I'm in charge. You please me, I can redeem you. But if you want to mess up or allow people to take advantage of you, hey, go to it. But whatever you do, don't blame God. He didn't sell her. Verse 3, I won't, biblical law lets you know what for what a divorce can be granted for. And that's what God is saying there. Different subject, different time. Verse 3, I clothe the heavens with blackness, and I make sackcloth their covering. For those that won't listen, that's what he can do. He can just about close it up to where you'd probably doubt, be a big old doubter, and your faith might be a little bit on the weak side. If I could only believe. It's just like... Uh, probably some will call this a digression, but that is it may. Bin Laden blows up the world towers from the basement. And then the destroyer of the coal. And then a couple of embassies. And if we could just be sure. If we could just be sure. Well, you know, what do you do with a person like that? You know? What do you do when you've got the proof? The DNA is there, all right, spiritually speaking. God's going to close it. He'll cover it over until somebody begins to stand up and say, praise God. You know, there are more people in church today in this nation than there, were, there was at uh, Passover or Easter, if you prefer. Why? People want to be close to the Father. That's why. Verse 4, The Lord God hath given me the tongue of the learned, that I should know how to speak a word in season to him that is weary. He uh, wakeneth morning by morning. He wakeneth mine ear to hear as the learned. And of course, this is Christ. Are you in him? Then learn. Well, how do I learn? This word, absorb it. Hold it close to you. Unfortunately, we have too many people that want to play Jesus. They want to play Christ. They want to think there's something great. Well, I'm different. No, you're not. Everything is common to everyone. But Christ is the answer. Christ is the way to walk. All of us that do uh, have knowledge and ability in the Word, it's a gift given from God. You can't take credit for it. He gave it to you. Then get the eyes out of your heart and mind and serve God and be blessed. That's kind of what he's saying here. Because, well, how, how, can, how can I know that? The Lord hath given me. Did you read the first verse? The Lord hath given me. You didn't acquire it because you're something special. The Lord gave it to you. Verse 5, the Lord hath opened mine ear. Who did? Well, I'm so super intelligent, my ear just hears this. No, God opened it. And I was not rebellious, neither turned away the back. Uh, in other words, when God spoke, I didn't turn my back on him. Have you? Has God spoken to you? Is the Holy Spirit giving you unction? That he needs you to speak, perhaps to a person that's down? A person that's lost, a person that needs a little encouragement, a person maybe that needs a hug. Has he ever given you that unction and you turned your back and walked away? I'm not trying to put anybody on a guilt trip, but what I am trying to show you that we live in a very real world and Christianity is not a religion, it's a reality. Verse 6, I gave my back to the smiters and my cheeks to them that plucked off the hair. I hid not my face from shame and spitting. And of course there you know we're talking about Christ. He did that for us and may we ever be thankful to him that he did has done this for us. It's fantastic the gifts that he has given us. Verse 7, For the Lord God will help me. Do you know that? Are you that sure of it? The Lord God, not maybe, will help me. 
Therefore shall I not be confounded, therefore have I set my face like a flint, and I know that I shall not be ashamed. I don't know how easy can people play with your mind. Some, some sharpy preacher, can he come up to you and say, Hey, you heard about the second book of Nebuchadnezzar in the Old, Old Testament? But you know that that was a word long before the word. And if you really want to be blessed by God, you have got to absorb the second book of Nebuchadnezzar. Well, now naturally, you that are so wise, you know there is no such thing. All right? But there are people that will let a sharpie just twist their little old minds around and they'll say, ooh. And he'll start off saying, you know what Satan's main uh, MO is? He's going to say, you have got to be one of the most intelligent people I've ever had the privilege of meeting. But, <laughs> watch the butts, friend. That's where he really starts doing a number on you. All right? No. As it is written in 1 Corinthians chapter, what? Chapter 10, verse 13. All things are common to all people. Nothing has ever happened to you that isn't common to everybody else. And God shall never burden you with more than you can bear, and he will always give you a way out if you listen to him. All right? So um, God gives us so much and sometimes we let things slide until we get in the position we were this past week. It's very easy to understand because, in a way, we don't think in those terms. We don't, you know, it's pretty difficult to fight against somebody that wants to die. Okay? I mean, hey, I, I think I have a better plan. If they really want to die that bad, let them line up. Okay? We can help them to the happy hunting ground forever, okay? You know, but leave the innocent children alone. So, there you go. All right. Perhaps that's a digression. I don't think so. You let things slide far enough, and this is what we're faced with. We're not even... Tr we're, our natural birth will not allow us to even think in those terms. Um... If any one of those people thought in those terms, they, it would have taken more than five men to take over the aircraft with plastic. They would have probably opened the door and threw all five of them out. That's not possible, but you know what I'm saying. And we have strong uh, indications that that happened on one of them. All right. Not that they threw them out, but that they overcome. And no doubt, these boys knew they had to die. And when they seen, could see they were losing the battle, he had one choice. If they had been taken prisoner, they would have, it would have upset their whole net. So he took it into the ground so they couldn't be questioned, no doubt. I seem to keep bringing up this past week, do I not, while teaching this? And I haven't even got to the mothballs yet. Okay, verse 8. He is near that justifieth me. Do you know that? Do you believe it? He's close to you. He's not way off somewhere else. He's near you. Who will contend with me? Who wants to take me on? Let us stand together. Who is mine adversary? Let him come near to me. Bring him on. And when God is near you, and he is when you're in the Word, when you seek the truth. You're a champion of the people. Does that make you real special? No, God gives you those, that authority and power. Stand up. Stand up and be counted and don't be afraid to speak. Speak out. Verse 9, Behold, the Lord God will help me. Not maybe, not perhaps. Who is he that shall condemn me? Lo, they all shall wax old as a garment. This is how they're going to be, really. This is how God's going to bless them. The moth shall eat them up. The moth, in their beliefs and in their way, makes his home and his nest in their very religion and makes a home out of it and twists it and turns it until pretty soon they got nothing but a holy church. Uh, holy, not like holy, holy, okay? 
got holes in it. Why? It won't hold water. won't hold truth. Be careful, friend, when you listen to people that twist God's words, trying to make a name for themselves, their selves, rather than teaching God's word as it is written, chapter by chapter, verse by verse. That old moth comes in there at night, never flies in the daytime, comes in there in the night and slips in. And that little old moth fly looks for dirt, finds the dirtiest thing you got, lays its little egg there, and its little egg takes your dirt and makes itself a home. So what do you think it's going to amount to? That's what God wants you to know. Look at that in a religious sense. Satan likes to find somewhere where he can reach your minds with some rag sheet or some filth on the net uh, called religion or this or that or gossip or malicious gossip that's harmful to some people if, they, if their forehead wasn't set like flint. That means your mind is so set on the truth nobody can sway it. You're, you're going to remain focused and true. Don't let them eat you up in your mind, your belief. That's what it's talking about. Stay sure. If you're a true cedar of Lebanon, you don't have to worry about them anyway. You got that? Okay? That's kind of a parable. It's a proverb. You know, there is a man, there is a, comes to my mind, there is a man-made proverb. It goes like this. A moth will never bother a, um, a piece of wool that has been worn to a funeral. Sweater, is what I'm trying to say, okay? Moth will never bother a sweater that's worn to a funeral. That's just an old saying, but that's how men's traditions do. Is that true? The moth doesn't know where that thing's been. Okay, has no idea. All right. Guard your mind. Be careful what you're fed. You know, you've seen an example of this this past week to how devious people can be, even our own people, if it were them. I don't know if it was. Might have been the enemy that altered the list of survivors. How sick can you get? You know, that's why I say, if you listen to the internet, you you got a loose screw, all right. All you want to hear is junk, because there's a bunch of junkies on there. It's the most undisciplined bunch of people making accusations and claims that there's no fiber to the moths have already eaten holes clear through the thing. So, don't, don't, well, I saw it in print. Are you that stupid? I saw it right there on the screen. Are you that stupid? You know, that doesn't make it true just because some idiot set it down. This is truth. This is what you stick to, and it will give you enough common sense that you can carry your garbage out and put it where it's supposed to be and think right. Okay? So, don't let the moths get into your mind. All right? They'll eat holes in it. And you'll be confused instead of, you know, be calm. Don't ever let this enemy see you sweat on your first cruise. All right? Be deliberate and strong and disciplined. Otherwise, you're going to make mistakes. Stay straight on the course and we will have the victory. Back those that do right and help annihilate those that do wrong. Verse 10, Who is among you that feareth the Lord? This word in the Hebrew, feareth, is revereth. It uh, can be translated either way. Which is there among you that love God? That's the better way. That obeyeth, there's the condition, that obeyeth the voice of his servant. Well, 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 well who's his servant? Christ, the one we were talking about back in verse 6 and earlier. The one he sent. He couldn't find one fit among us, and he still hasn't this day. So he sent Christ. 
Do you obey his word? Well, where is it written? This is it. He is the living word, both old and new. That walketh in darkness and hath no light, let him trust in the name of the Lord and stay upon his God. In other words, when you learn to close your eyes on the darkness and look at the light, then you walk in that light. You know, even though God's put a darkness over heaven, it's light for you if you're in he that is the light. Verse 11. Behold, all ye that kindle a fire, that compass yourselves about with sparks. I, I, I want to draw you a picture here. This word sparks is firebrands, and that's what a preacher is really supposed to be. Is a firebrand. In other words, Christ said, I come not to bring peace, but a fire, and if I find it already kindled. So kind of, uh, in the Hebrew time, a, a real teacher was a firebrand. He said, you all are building up these sparklers, and you're just banishing them all around you. There's only one trouble. It's their fire. Got it? Not God's fire. They're really playing church. Man, we've got it going here. Let the Spirit touch you. The firebrands are rolling all around me. Glory, glory, glory. All right? He's a fake, in other words. Walk in the light of your fire. In other words, they don't walk in God's fire. They walk in their own fire. Religion, not God's. And in the sparks that ye have kindled... God didn't kindle them, they did. This shall ye have of mine hand. You shall lie down in sorrow. In other words, you're going to have a sorry ending. So don't, don't let holes get in your belief. Don't let people play games with your mind. Well, well how do I know? Right here. God, as it is written in Mark 13, Jesus himself said, I have foretold you all things. My question to you is, have you ever read it with understanding? Because you won't be, you won't be all that easily deceived if you have covered it, if you have read it. That's to say God's word, God's plan. Because as it is written... That's exactly how it's going down. And my friend, if you don't recognize the season that is around you today, I guarantee you, you haven't read it. Chapter 51, skip down to the verse 4. All right? Hearken unto me, my people, and give ear unto me, O my nation, for a law shall proceed from me. And I will make my judgment to rest for a light of the people. I don't know. Are you under that light? Well, I have a very troubled life. Well, get in the Word. And your troubled life will become duck soup for you. You'll say, let, let the enemy come on. I'm ready for him. Okay? Doesn't do you any harm to do a little battle with demons before breakfast. I mean, take names and kick dragon. We have that authority if you're a man or woman enough or child enough to stand up and believe it. I wouldn't advise trying it if you don't, because some of those demons are scary. Believe me, very scary if you don't have the faith. Whew, they are. Just take my word for it. We have people that come from all over the country. Uh, we, uh, well, uh, here I am on television. Oh, well. Let's close this up. Right now. Verse 5. If you're not careful, you can pick up a new extra sideline in your ministry, and I, I prefer teaching. Okay? 5. My righteousness is near. Do, do you understand that? I'm just all alone. No, you're not. His righteousness is near. He is near you. My salvation is gone forth. It's there for you. It's waiting. And mine arm shall judge the people. The isle shall wait upon me, and on mine arm shall they trust. In other words, what happens in the isles and the whole world, I'm going to control it. Now, hey, I'm going to tell you something. Which do you want to go with, man or God? That's your choice. Eleven. Lift up your eyes to the heavens. Take a look. 
And now let, let, let me let me help those that maybe have not studied with me. He's talking about this heaven age, not the one that has, and not the one that's going to be. He's talking about this one. It's the word world is translated eon, which means age. This world age, and look upon the earth beneath. That's to say, this earth age, for the heaven shall vanish away like smoke. That's to say, this age is going to. Heaven itself is not going to. Just this age. And the earth shall wax old like a garment. In other words, this earth age is already getting a lot of age on it. All right. In other words, according to the signs as documented in Revelation, we're coming up, we're, we're almost, we can hear, hear the uh, trumpet. And they that dwell therein shall die in like manner, but my salvation shall be forever. This earth age is going to be gone, but his salvation is forever. Hey, you want to be there? Want to be there? Then listen to him and accept his salvation, and you are forever instead of just a passing fancy in the flesh going somewhere to turn back to dirt. But my salvation shall be forever, and my righteousness shall not be abolished ever, ever, ever. Verse 7, Hearken unto me, ye that know righteousness. That kind of puts a condition on that, doesn't it? Do you know what's right? That's what righteousness means. Do you know what's right and do you know what's wrong? Naturally, if you know what's right, you automatically know what's wrong. Well, what are you talking about? Well, God is right. Man's righteousness is as filthy rags compared to God's teaching as to what is right. Okay? The people in whose heart is my law. The people, heart translates mind. The people that have this word in their mind and believe it and obey it. Fear ye not the approach of men. This is not Adam in the Hebrew, it's Enosh. And we've seen Enosh working. Neither be ye afraid of their revilings. It doesn't matter what they say. There's going to be threats and people are going to say, Woo! Woo! They threaten me. So? So what? They're going to be done away with. Let them squall and scream and kick and pitch and best go out and get you a bank and just cry and get it out of your system because that's the way it is, friend. It's going down that way, all right? Don't let Satan toy with you. I mean, after all, you're a child of God. And God controls everything. Don't let somebody push you around. Never, okay? You don't have to be afraid and don't worry about their complaining and revilings and, and so forth. Eight, for the moth shall eat them up like a garment, and the worm shall eat them like wool. But my righteousness shall be forever and my salvation from generation to generation. Do you know something, friend? That reaches to right now. His promise is here. This is the generation of the fig tree, especially in this generation. The generation when the fig tree was set out in Jerusalem in the year of our Lord, 1948. Both the good and the bad. And here you are today. God is near you if you let him. Or he could give you a divorcement. It's up to you. Do you think God would divorce someone that paid no attention? You bet. You bet. He doesn't mess around with those that know better. And still, whenever the battle is on, try to cop out. Try to pass the buck or try to grab onto some lie. He didn't buy that. Turn with me to Matthew chapter 6. Verse 19, Jesus' teaching, New Testament. Verse 19, lay not... This is, this is where he taught you how to pray, okay? It's not what, the way the Lord prayed, but it's the way he taught us to pray. Taught about how that we should forgive everyone 
that asked for forgiveness and deserved it. All right? Now, otherwise, God's law shall be carried out. Uh, verse 19 of Matthew chapter 6. Lay not up yourselves treasures upon earth where moth and rust doth corrupt and where thieves break through and steal. Now, many people teach this. You know, most preachers right here get real antsy. You're not supposed to have your treasure in the bank. You're supposed to give it to me. You know, don't lay up something that will get you in trouble. That's not what it means. If God has, you know, if you've been a servant of God and God has blessed you with riches, are you going to be ashamed about it? That'd make about as much sense as you going out here and shooting something besides a turkey, wouldn't it? That just don't fit. If God has blessed you and you're rich, it's because He wanted you to be. This is where you put your heart and mind. If all you think about is money and never God, then you better get rid of it, friend. You better get rid of the thoughts in your mind foremost. That's what he's talking about. Or that old moth is going to start working on your gray matter. And it's going to end up with holes in it. God's going to pull away from you. He's going to divorce you. Thieves break through and steal. I guess dear reverends sometime apply for that more than anything. <gasps> are you calling the dear reverends thieves? Well, I don't know. What do they talk about mostly? Do they talk about money a lot? I mean, God didn't send out beggars. And sometimes all they can do is beg. So why? who do you think sent them? This is why we're not on too many Christian religious stations. Right? Though, thank God, we're on 365 stations, but not too many of them are... You know, if you start talking about people begging for money, they, they get tired of your company in a hurry. They want you to be extricated. But that's all right. I, it's the truth, and I'm going to teach the truth whether it takes hide, hair, and all. All right? It's the way it is. And God always makes up for the blessings. All right? So, watch out for thieves that try to take your mind. Verse 20, But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. Absorb the word. As God said back in Isaiah 51, absorb his law that he sends to you. It simply means his word. And he's near you. He protects you. And he blesses you. He, do you know something? God wants you to have everything if you can handle it. But he only gives us what we can handle. Okay? Because if he gives you too much and you can't handle it, guess who's going to end up with it? All right? That's just... Hey... You know, a lot of people get angry at me for making that statement because it's not really biblical. It's just down through my years of experience of watching people. Somebody coming in, God blesses them and they get a little money ahead. And one comes in real anxious. Have you heard of this great thing? It's an offshore account. And I look at him and I say, you want to send your money offshore? Do you hear what I'm saying? Do you want to send your money offshore? Oh, yes. They pay 90%. Uh-uh, sucker. They take 100% of what you send off the shore, start their motorboat, and they are gone. Well, you don't understand, brother. They had to take bankruptcy. So? You know. Hey. There's one born every minute, I guess, isn't there? That's what they say. Now, is that true? I don't know. And I love people whether they are or not. It's my job to try to keep people out of that kind of a fix. Think. Think. There are no free rides in this world except what God gives you as a blessing. And I'm going to tell you something. The harder you work and the better you use this, the more God will bless you. Okay? Don't fall in Satan's main trap, usury. That's the biggest bunch of thieves there ever was. Well, I've got out enough I can buy something else on time. No, make the payments to yourself. And then go pay cash. You know, my, well, my washing machine. Kick it, kick it, kick it. Wire it. You know, shake it. And make payments to yourself till you can buy that new one. All right, got it? Here we go. I, don't, I think I may have digressed a little bit there. Okay? 
But the moth will do the same thing to you, all right? Now, we're going to go here to 21. For where your treasure is, there will your heart or your mind be also. That's just the way it is. Your mind is where your heart is. Your treasure is wherever your mind is. Don't lay one up where it doesn't count. 22. The light of the body is the eye. Do you know that? Do you understand that that's when you look at someone and make eye contact? that that's mirroring their soul. And you know, a person that's had experience, you know, they'll usually say, I can tell in five minutes whether somebody's pretty, get a pretty good grasp of them in five minutes. Do you know why? This. You can tell. But a lot of people won't listen to their better mind. They'll say, well, maybe I'm wrong. Next thing you know, they've had the ride. <laughs> They've had the trip. The eye is the mirror of the soul. You can see into a person's soul through their eye. If, for, thine eye be single, translate it clear. If your eye be clear, thy whole body shall be full of light. In other words, it allows Christ the light to come into your soul, and then your soul begins to emanate the, the light to shine it forth. All right? It, that's, a, that's the way you know people. It's just that natural. 24. No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon, mammon you, which is ill-gotten gains. You can't serve God and be a crook at the same time. Basically, that's what he's saying there. Okay, in conclusion... Turn with me to Luke chapter 12. The reason I want to go to Luke chapter 12, Christ has been teaching here, and he has just finished talking about the unpardonable sin. If you think the unpardonable sin is not important, you're sadly mistaken. The unpardonable sin is written in the 10th verse, or kind of begins in the 10th verse of this 12th chapter. That's not why we're co we've come here. We've come here for a different reason. I want to document what I said earlier, that God wants you to have everything you need, if you follow his word. All right? But at the same time, for the deeper scholar, what he's telling you here, because of the fact of verse 10, where he says, if you're delivered up before the synagogue of Satan, and you refuse the Holy Spirit a chance to speak through you, it's unforgivable. You want to be careful how the moth plays with your mind. For one of God's elect, it can be very costly. Okay, That's just a fact. Now, I want to pick this up in verse 31. We're only going to cover three or four more verses and we're out of here. Okay, <clears throat> Verse 31. This is what God wants you to do. But rather, seek ye the kingdom of God. The kingdom means he's our king, and this is his dominion. Seek it and follow him. And all these things shall be added unto you. He's going to give them to you. You don't ask for him. You don't beg. You just do what's right, and he'll give it to you when you earn it. After you do it, he'll pay you. Don't beg, <clears throat> and don't wish. Okay? Work with belief. Do God's doings, His Word, and He will bless you. Do you know something? When someone does that, the people just love them. They can't help loving them and assisting them and helping them. Why? They're good people when they're doing God's Word. God wants... 32, fear not, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. I mean, he's got it. He owns everything. Well, I wish I could believe that. Well, if you're just wishing, forget it. Okay? You're peddling upstream instead of going downstream. By that, that's a pro proverb that means you're making it hard for yourself instead of easy. All right? <clears throat> My old brother-in-law had another saying that I wish I could use about wishing, something about wishing in one hand or... Anyway, you know, uh, 33. 
sell that you have and give alms, provide yourself bags which wax not old, a treasure in the heavens that faileth not, where no thief approacheth nor moth corrupteth. There, when you're in God's kingdom, you know you can be there today. This is his dominion, and he's our king. That's what the word kingdom means, the king and his dominion. If you're in Christ, he's near you. How many times have we read today, he is near you, he is with you, he will give it to you? I mean, what does it take sometimes to get somebody to see something? He's here. And it's yours in part today. He's provided the rest for you. Okay? Uh, in other words, what he's saying is that corruption can't come close to you. Do you know something? I can tell you right now. Our trials that we're in, we got it made. We're going to win. I don't have any doubt about it. Why? The people are hitting their knees again. The people are beginning to throw out the garbage and talk to our Father. And I know that all of you have. He hears his children. 34. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Let your loins be girded about and your thigh lights burning. Do you, do you know what the old, do you know what that proverb means? Let your loins be girded about. You know, they, some of these churches tell women, never put on man's clothing. Well, men wore dresses. All right, bad as I hate to admit it. <laughs> you know, I, preachers do this. They get that woman to get a dress on or get out of here. Well, when, you know, when Deuteronomy 22 was written, men wore dresses. Okay. It's not talking about that anyway. You, the way you did, here you took your girt and you loosened it and you reached down here and you got your dress tail and you pull that sucker up, or pull the dress tail up, <laughs> and you put that belt up through there and your legs were free and you could run, you could work, you could fight. Why I wanted you to see that picture, God expects you to fight. Maybe it's just mentally, well, I'm handicapped. Spiritually, some of, some of the handicapped are the strongest warriors I know spiritually. They got it. But fight for your right. Don't let people walk on you. All right? Now, naturally, I, I, I don't want somebody to become a troublemaker. If you think that's what I'm talking about, you are so wrong. Be sweet to everybody, but if somebody tries to take advantage of you, that tries to run over you, pow! All right? I mean, you don't have to take it if it's the enemy trying to take down good people. God didn't want it. He wanted us to be intelligent. And um, so be gentle. We don't bother anybody, but God help those that bother us. Okay? God help those that bother us. So there you've got it. That poor old moth. You know, she comes along in the dark and it's given in a religious sense and she looks for some dirt wonder where I could lay this little egg and, and that the, the, as it's written in Job why it says the moth's house or in another place in Job in, in chapter 38 moth is mentioned again I, I beg your pardon in chapter 38 the word ash is Arturus which has the same deeper connotation. But she lays that egg and takes your own mind, the nap, okay, of the wool, your mind, and builds its own house out of your gray matter, is what he's saying. And then once it gets its house built, it'll take you over completely. And that's not demonic. That's false teaching. That's false religion. That's people playing with people's minds saying this is holy when it can be dastardly. So see that you're on guard. See that you stay clear-headed by allowing your soul to be beautiful through your eye, whereby that that is evil falls back from it. Do you know that it will? 
Do you know that an evil spirit, if you have a clear eye, do you know that that's how we can tell when we have been successful or God has been successful in casting out an evil spirit? The eye will be all clouded. But the minute Christ removes it, that eye clears up, you can see the pupil, and it's a different person. Amazing. Let your eye be clear and let the spirit soak into you of truth. Don't let the little moth flitter around your house at night. Keep it clean spiritually and then you don't have anything to worry about. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Father, for your word. Thank you, Father, for being a part of this great nation. And as this nation, we thank you for all the friends we have around the world, Father. How beautiful they are that they come and join us at a time like this. Thank God for this nation. Father, thank you for all the men in the past and women that have died for this freedom. Let us not squander it at this time with weakness. Strengthen the hearts of all in this nation. We ask it in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Free introductory package. Say, this is something we would like to offer for a one-time gift to all the new folk that study with us. This introductory package gives you a monthly newsletter, which means each month you will receive a newsletter with a Bible study on it. Hey, raising funds? No way. We're not beggars. We're Bible teachers. That's what it consists of. A tape catalog that will give you all the topics that are covered. And the Mark of the Beast tape. What is this Mark of the Beast? Is it really on your forehead? No, Satan's considerably more intelligent than that. It's in your forehead, which is to say in your mind. Have you been deceived? This is a free offer to you, one time to each new student. Say, find out what's really happening and what the story is on the mark of the beast. Hearing God's Word with understanding will change your life. We hope you have enjoyed studying God's Word here on the Shepherd's Chapel Family Bible Study Hour with Pastor Arnold Murray. If you would like to receive more information concerning Shepherd's Chapel, you may request our free introductory offer. Our introductory offer contains the Mark of the Beast audio tape, our monthly newsletter with a written Bible study, a tape catalog, and a list of written reference works available through Shepherd's Chapel. To request our free introductory offer by telephone, call 800-643-4645. 24 hours a day. You may also request our introductory offer by writing to Shepherd's Chapel, Post Office Box 416, Gravit, Arkansas, 72736. Once again, that's Shepherd's Chapel, Post Office Box 416, Gravit, Arkansas, 72736. We invite you to join us for the next in-depth Bible study each weekday at this same time. Thank you for watching today's program, and God bless you. This has been a long time I've been promising a children's book. This is a book that will help uh, a parent teach their child exactly what...